going everybody, Jared here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Blue Spark. This is a cardioid condenser mic from the company Blue. Blue is really famous for their Blue Yeti line, but they make fantastic microphones all around. The Spark is another example of that. And also just to get this out of the way, everything that you hear inside of this video is being recorded with the Blue Spark. So let's go ahead and talk about the build quality. So from the unboxing experience to the microphone itself, everything just screams quality. I mean, this is the box that it came in. It's made out of wood, a wooden box. Now I wasn't able to look up exactly what this microphone was made out of, but for the most part, the body of it, the orange and red part of the microphone seems to be a ceramic material. And then the rest of it seems to be completely metal. I could be wrong about the ceramic part. It could be just a coated metal, but either way, everything about it is just really tough. And you can tell that everything was just made with quality. Now, one thing that did happen to me was with the metal pop filter that came with the microphone. So I was actually just taking it off the microphone and it actually shredded where I'm supposed to screw it in. So I cannot actually screw that pop filter in there anymore. I am under warranty, so I could probably get that fixed, but it's not that big of a deal to me because that pop filter really didn't do much anyway. It just made it look cool. Which brings me to my next statement. If you're going to use this microphone, I would really recommend getting a pop filter. Otherwise, you just hear every breath that's breathed into the microphone and you just get a bad sound overall. I'll be doing some pop and no pop tests later on this video. But another thing that's really important to keep in mind is that this microphone is an XLR microphone. So unless you actually have something inside of your computer, which I'm assuming most people don't, that actually connects XLR to XLR, then you actually have to buy another thing that goes along with this microphone. And that is where the Focusrite Scarlett or something along those lines comes in. Because you're buying the microphone for about $200, but you have to keep in mind that there is the Scarlett Focusrite, which costs like an extra $50 to $100, depending on what you want. Because that Scarlett Focusrite that you buy is going to convert that XLR coming from your microphone to a USB thing that you can plug inside of your computer to actually transfer it as data to your computer. But it's also an important feature of the Scarlett Focusrite because you have to control the gain within that Scarlett Focusrite, as well as you can control the volumes and listen to yourself as you are recording. But there are other cheaper options that you can pick, of course. Now, another feature that's on this microphone is that there's this little button on the back. And essentially what that does is once it's clicked in, it focuses more on the sound in front of it and if it's clicked out, it has a wider range of sound. Now I haven't seen a huge difference between it being on and off. There's just a little bit of background noise that's introduced if you turn it off. And essentially what this allows it to do is capture more of the sound around it. And that allows it, so if you're playing a guitar or something like that, it actually captures more of the guitar sound. So it's perfect for that. But if you want it on, if you're thinking of doing something like podcasting, or if you're trying to record yourself just speaking like I am right now. But either way, you come to a microphone review to hear how it sounds. So let's get into that. All right, so right now I'm speaking into the microphone just how I would if I were a podcaster or how I do in my tutorials. I sit pretty close to my microphone. So this is how the microphone sounds when I'm standing a little bit further away, probably about a foot or more. And essentially this is how it would sound if I'm recording on camera and I want this down below out of my field of view so that the camera just sees me. This is how I had it set up earlier. And then this is me from far away, and this is to emulate someone that is into filming. I would not recommend this. This is definitely more for doing voiceovers and podcasting. And then this is how the audio would sound without the pop filter in front of it. And if I were doing a podcasting pretty close up. And then of course, this is how it would sound if I was just talking on normal camera without the pop filter. And this is really not needed. Dust this off. So now here is how acoustics would sound. I didn't say I was any good at guitar. <laughs> Gotta keep one jump head of the red line, one swing head of the sword. I steal only what I can afford. And that's everything. When I look into your eyes, it's like I'm watching the night sky or a beautiful sunrise. 
There's so much they hold. Anyway, there you guys have it. Those are the sound tests. And my overall impression of this microphone is it's very nice. So yeah, I'd recommend this thing in a heartbeat, but I would also recommend looking into some other cheaper microphones uh, if you're just starting out especially. I decided to go with this microphone because I just wanted an upgrade over the Blue Yeti. And I think this was a very nice upgrade over that. Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.